Today, we'll be learning how to create this particular seamless loop. If you only want to know how to loop the noisy motion, then you can skip to the timestamps given in the description of the video. But if you want to learn how to create this entire thing, stick along for the ride. In our default scene, we can go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and we're going to change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. We'll press new to add in a new geometry node tree, and we can set up the different objects that we want. So we'll select the group input, press X to delete it, press Shift A and search for a mesh circle. Now I did something very similar in this video over here that you can check out. It'll be linked in the top right corner. We also looped it, but we use a different method, which I think is much more complicated than the method we're going to learn in this video. And that's why I'm recreating this video using completely different techniques every step of the way. Once you've set up the mesh circle into the group output, we can change the fill type from none to n gone so that we actually have a surface that can be seen. Now we can also increase the vertices from 32 to 128 or even higher just to make the edges much smoother. Now we need this particular circle to have a ring around it. To do that, we'll press Shift A and search for a joint geometry node so that we can have both this circle and the ring and then press shift a and search for a mesh to curve node and plug this mesh circle into the mesh of the mesh to curve and this curve into the joint geometry. Now to actually see the curve, we need to give it some profile. So we press shift a and search for a curve to mesh node, plug that in here. And for the profile curve, we press shift a and search for a curve circle this time. Now before plugging it in, we can change the radius down to something like 0.1 and then plug it into the profile curve. And it's still too fat. So I'll decrease the radius even further, make it 0.025. Then increase the resolution from 32 to maybe 128 as well so that it becomes really smooth. Of course, this one doesn't have to be this high of a resolution, but I'll keep it like this. If your laptop cannot handle it, you can reduce the resolution a bit. Now, this is one unit. While we're at it, we'll add in the materials for this unit. So we'll press Shift A and search for a set material node, plug that in here, and then press Shift D and add that in over here as well. So now we can take these, press Control J to add in a new frame, go to the no node tab here. If this section isn't open, press N to hide and bring it back. Label this frame as base circle. And I'm labeling all of this so that anybody on Patreon who's using this file will be able to use it in an easier manner. So if you want to add in another node into this frame, like this join geometry should be inside this frame, you can just click and drag it into the frame and then it becomes a part of the frame. And as you move it, the frame moves along with it. Now we need a bunch of these. So for that, we're going to move the group output a bit higher, press shift A and search for a grid node. And now we can take this mesh from the grid node and plug it in. We'll click and bring it there. And that's our grid. To actually see how large we want the grid, we can set up our camera. So we'll press seven to go into the top view and then we'll press Control Alt zero to snap camera to view. And then we'll go ahead and increase the size on the X and the Y till it covers up the camera's view. So just a bit higher than the camera is fine. And then increase the size on the X to just cover the outside of the camera. Once we're happy with this, we'll distribute a bunch of points onto the face. So we'll press Shift A, distribute points on faces, plug that in. And we're going to change it from random to Poisson disk so that we can have this distance min slider so that we don't get any overlapping circles. So this seems all right for now. Next, we have to instance the circles onto this. So we'll press Shift A and search for instance on points node, plug that in here. And for the actual instance, we can take the output from this base circle frame and plug that into the instance. Now we have all of these base circles. Next up, clearly the circles are way too large. So we'll play around with the scale. And for that, we'll press Shift A and search for a random value node. But the problem is a random value is going to change it on the Z axis as well if we directly plug it. If we change it to a vector from a float, it'll change on the X and Y separately. So we won't have circles. We'll have elliptical shapes, which I don't want. So I'm going to have to press Shift A and search for a combine X, Y, Z node and plug the value from the random value into the X and the Y. And for the Z, I'm going to keep it as a constant one so that it doesn't squish or stretch on the Z axis. Then I can take the vector output from here and plug that into the scale. And immediately we get all of these circles. To decrease the maximum size of these large circles, we can just decrease the max till we get a size that we're about happy with. Maybe 0.5 will work for me. And the min also, I'm going to increase to 0.1 just so that the smallest circles are a little bigger. Once we have this set, we can go ahead with actually looping the motion of these circles. So to loop any motion or random particles, we can play around with this distribute points on faces node by setting the position of the points randomly. So we'll press shift A and search for a set position node and plug that in right here. Now we can play with the X and Y separately. And for the Z, I don't want it to animate up and down. So we'll just use a constant value. How we're going to loop it is by shifting all of this a little higher. And we're going to use two separate noise textures, one for the X and one for the Y. 
So press Shift A and search for a noise texture and we'll change it from 3D to 4D. Then press Shift D to get another noise texture and change the W value to something random. That way it doesn't end up being the exact same on the X axis and the Y axis. So now we actually have to combine these and we're going to use a combine X, Y, Z node to do the same. So now we can take this factor and plug it into the X, take this factor, plug it into the Y. And for the Z, I'll press Shift A and just search for a random value and just plug this into the Z. Now to actually get the noise texture to loop, we can press Shift A and search for a wave texture, plug that in right here and do the exact same on the Y axis as well. So take this wave texture, Shift D, plug that in right here. Just rearrange the nodes a little bit. And now I'm going to click and drag to increase the timeline and we can set all of our animation defaults to help with the looping. So we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and frame is going to be 150. The output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, I'm going to use FFmpeg video and for FFmpeg video, the container has to be MPEG4 with an output quality of perceptually lossless. Now you can press the back arrow to go to frame zero or the left arrow to go to frame zero and then tap I over the phase offset, then go to frame 150 and then change the phase offset to any even multiple of pi. So I'll go with two star pi and that's one full loop, but then I'll just press I. Now the thing is that you can't actually see the keyframes here. So make sure that you click the node and only then the keyframes for the node appears. Now press T linear. That way it just becomes a smooth loop. Now if you play the animation, you can see nothing's happening because we haven't combined the X, Y, Z into the set position. So let's just plug this up. And then when you play the animation, you can see that everything moves on the x-axis randomly and it loops perfectly, which is exactly what we want. Now to do the exact same thing for the y value, all you do is go back to frame zero, hover over phase offset and tap i, then go to frame 150, change it to any even multiple of pi. So I'm going to say two star pi and then hover over it and tap i. Now make sure that you select this node because the keyframes that appear down here are for the previous node that was selected. So make sure that you select it and then come down and press T linear. So now if you play it, you get motion in the 2D plane. And of course, everything is shifted upwards by 0.5 units. You could use math nodes to bring that back, but I'm just going to press G X minus 0.5, G Y minus 0.5. That also works. Now we have everything centralized. And by changing a random value on the Z axis, you see the clippings that are happening in certain regions would not happen. So right here, this is clearly clipping through each other. If we did not have a random value on the Z axis and we just had it at a single value, every single one of these circles would clip. Now only a few of them are clipping. And to fix that, you can either play around with the max distance to just increase the distance between them. And eventually you will reach a situation where all of them do not clip with each other. But again, that process will affect the ambient occlusion later on. So you can keep the max value down at one itself and play with the seed until you get a variation where there isn't any clipping happening. So that shouldn't take too long to find. And if it is too hard, just play around with the max value by a little bit. And I think I got one which I'm fairly satisfied with. So I'm having to use a C value of five. There's a little bit of clipping up here, but that's all right. Next up, we can press Shift A and search for a mesh plane and just scale that up to act as our background and just grab it on the Z axis by a little bit so that you move it down so that there's some distance between our circular objects and the base. With that, we can start all of our texturing. So first we'll set all of our render defaults. So we'll go to our render settings, switch on ambient occlusion, which is gonna be the main one we'll play around with it. We can also switch on bloom and screen space reflections, although this plays a minimal role in this animation. To see the changes, we can switch from the solid view to the viewport shading of render, and that way we can see what we have. Now you could use the light and play around with it. I don't want it, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide the light. Then I'm gonna go to the world properties here and increase the base color all the way to white, after which I'm gonna select the plane that we just added in as the background, go to the material, materials, press new to add in a new material, call this plane and change the base color all the way to black. And with that, I'm also going to increase the roughness all the way to one. Once I'm done with that, I'm also going to select the camera and just go to the object data properties, go to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one so that I don't see anything outside the camera view. And hence it won't be disturbing. Along with that, I'll also switch off overlays so that I see what's in the final render. Now, I don't see any ambient occlusion occurring. So I'm going to go to my render properties, expand the ambient occlusion, increase the distance till I start seeing some ambient occlusion. And I'm going to increase the factor as well. Maybe something like 20 will do. So I'm going to go with the distance of 1.5 and a factor of 18. Once you're happy with the ambient occlusion settings, you can go ahead and select your geometry nodes object and switch this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. Then go to the materials over here and you see you have a single material. So we have to set this for the rings and the plane separately. So we'll go back to the geometry node editor, 
for the set material over here, we can change this material's name to base and give this set material the base material. Then press this plus button to add in a new material slot. Press the new to add in a new material. Change the name from material to something like rings. And since this is the rings over here, we're going to give this material rings. Now you can switch back to the shader editor and we currently have rings selected. For the rings, I'm just going to increase the metallic all the way to one. I'm going to reduce the roughness to 0.2 and I'm going to change the base color to something a little more golden. So just bring it down here and that's my goldish color. Then you can select base from over here, change the base color to maybe a darker color and I'm going to increase the roughness all the way to one. Instead of keeping the base color at a complete black, I'm just going to lift it up a little bit. So that's actually all there is to creating this particular looping animation that you can use as the background of various situations. Do check out my previous video on this because the technique is completely different and you never know when you might require which technique. And that's the point of tutorials. However, if you've watched so far, thank you so much for watching. The watch time really helps. And until the next video comes out, which is tomorrow, keep creating and stay creative.